Good morning, sahabat pemasyarakatan. Greetings to our viewers around the world. With me, Sikit Budianto. And I'm Daddy Edward. We are here for the special edition of Apa Kabar Masyarakatan English News Channel, celebrating the 79 Indonesia Independence Day and Pengayoman Day. Sahabat pemasyarakatan, Pengayoman Day is the anniversary of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights, commemorated every August 19. Let's get into the full updates on Apa Kabar Masyarakatan English News Channel. Sahabat pemasyarakatan, more than 176,000 inmates received general remission and sentence reduction for 2024 on the occasion of the 79th anniversary of Republic of Indonesia, which was symbolically given to inmates. The Minister of Law and Human Rights, Yasona Halauli, said that this moment is a reflection of gratitude that can be felt by all layers of society, including inmates who have actively participated in rehabilitation programs. As part of the 79th anniversary of Indonesia's independence, 176,984 convicts and juvenile inmates received general remissions and sentence reduction for 2024. Yasona Halauli, who served as Minister of Law and Human Rights from 2014 to 2019 and 2019 to 2024, explained that the granting of these remissions is a form of appreciation for inmates who have committed to participating in rehabilitation programs. This year, the recipients of the general remissions include 172,678 inmates who had their sentences partially reduced while 3,050 inmates received remissions that allowed them to be immediately released or to re-enter into society through social reintegration. Yasuna also urged those who received remissions to use this opportunity as motivation to maintain good behavior, comply with the regulations, and actively engage in rehabilitation programs. He extended congratulations to all remission recipients, especially those granted the chance to reintegrate into society and reunite with their families. The minister expressed hope that the released inmates will contribute positively to the nation's development and live as good and useful citizens in their communities. The Minister of Law and Human Rights, Yasona Halauli, led the 79th Pengayoman Day Ceremony in 2024. Under the teams, Ministry of Law and Human Rights, serving the nations towards the golden age of Indonesia 2045. During the event, Yasona also gave awards to stakeholders who have collaborated and supported the ministry. Yasona Halauli, who served as Minister of Law and Human Rights from 2014 to 2019 and 2019 to 2024, led the 79th anniversary ceremony of the Ministry of Law and Human Rights in 2024. The theme of the celebration was Ministry of Law and Human Rights serving the nation towards the golden age of Indonesia 2045. In his remarks, Yasona emphasized the crucial role of the ministry in strengthening the rule of law and protecting human rights. He stated that service is the essence of every job, noting that it is not merely a slogan, but a commitment that must be implemented in every action. Yasona also reminded the audience that the ministry's mission goes beyond enforcing regulations. It also involves providing security and justice to the public. The 79-year journey of the ministry reflects a path filled with various challenges as well as numerous significant achievements. The ministry hopes that the 2024 anniversary celebration will further strengthen the commitment of all its members to provide the best service to the public and to achieve a just, sovereign, and prosperous Indonesia. After being inaugurated at the Presidential Palace, Supratman Andi Aktas officially took office as the Minister of Law and Human Rights, succeeding Yasonaha Lawli. The moment was celebrated with a handover ceremony at the Graha Pengayoman. 
Following his inauguration at the Presidential Palace, Supratman Andi Akhtas officially assumed office as the new Minister of Law and Human Rights, succeeding Yasona Halauli. During the handover ceremony at the Graha Pengayuman, Supratman delivered a directive to the ministry staff, urging them to collaborate for mutual progress. In his speech, Supratman stressed that without collaboration, efforts to advance the ministry's objectives would be vulnerable to division and failure. He expressed hope that the transition in leadership would not lead to discord and that success would be difficult to achieve without collective effort. Meanwhile, Yasuna Halauli, the outgoing minister who served from 2014 to 2019 and 2019 to 2024, expressed his gratitude to the entire ministry for their support over the past decade. He acknowledged that all of the ministry's achievements were the result of teamwork. Yasuna also offered his full support and called on all ministry staff to extend their wholehearted backing to Supratman as the new minister. Acting Director General of Corrections, Reinhard Silitonga, officially appointed Anna Reinhardt as the anti-stunting ambassador for corrections in Tangerang prisons. The establishment of this anti-stunting ambassador is part of ongoing efforts to enhance the quality of health services by reducing stunting rates among children of inmates in prison and detention centers. Acting Director General of Corrections, Reinhardt Silitonga, has inaugurated Anna Reinhardt as the Corrections Anti-Stunting Ambassador. This initiative is part of ongoing efforts to improve healthcare services, particularly by reducing the stunting rate among children in correctional facilities. Reinhardt reported that in March 2024, out of 88 children in custody, 3 or 3.4 percent were identified as stunted. This represents a significant reduction of 10.89% compared to the stunting rate in 2020. He emphasized that reducing stunting requires collaboration from all parties, including the Corrections Women Association, or PIPAS, which is committed to becoming anti-stunting ambassadors. The role of the Corrections Anti-Stunting Ambassador includes overseeing and promoting self-sufficient maternal and children health services. Additionally, the ambassador will advocate for stunting prevention and healthy living by promoting balanced nutrition guidelines within correctional facilities. The Central and Bandar Lampung Association of Women of Corrections, or PIPAS, conducted a social service by donating a water well to the community of Sriwedari Village, Lampung. The social service is expected to meet the community's need for clean water and support the improvement of health for the surrounding residents. The Central Corrections Women Association, or PIPAS, in collaboration with PIPAS in Bandar Lampung, conducted a social service activity by providing a poor well to the residents of Sriwedari village. On this occasion, Anna Reinhardt, the chairwoman of PIPAS, reaffirmed the association's commitment to social initiatives emphasizing the provision of clean water for the community, which will also benefit local farmer groups. Anna expressed hope that the bore well would meet the clean water needs of Sriwedari village residents, thereby supporting the improvement of public health. Improved health, she noted, would lead to more productive work and recreational activities, ultimately contributing to national development. Additionally, the PIPAS chairwoman visited the juvenile facility in Bandar Lampung where she donated a set of musical instruments to the juvenile inmates. This gesture reflects central PIPAS concern for children in conflict with law. The donation is intended to help the inmates develop their potential and channel their interests, encouraging them to grow creatively and positively. The Director of Correctional Social Guidance and Restorative Justice, Pujo Harinto, launched a Productive Parole and Probation Office Initiative, or REPASPRO. Pujo said, this program is a part of Gria Abipraya, 
in collaboration with South Jakarta Department of Food Security, Marine and Agriculture, aimed at enhancing the creativity of parolees. The Director of Correctional Social Guidance and Restorative Justice, Pujo Harinto, praised the inauguration of the Productive Parole and Probation Office as part of the Kriya Abiprayak Latik Nawasena program. The initiative aims to provide a platform for parolees to enhance their economic skills during social reintegration through entrepreneurship training and the production of various goods and services. Pujo explained that Kriya Abipraya, meaning House of Hope, offers new opportunities for those who have strayed from the law to reintegrate in society in a positive way. He commended the inauguration, highlighting its role as a center that caters to all parolees needs from service delivery to the implementation of guidance programs and functioning as a business unit. In addition, the head of South Jakarta Parole and Probation Office, Unggul Widyo Saputro, elaborated that the Productive Parole and Probation Office focuses on producing bakery goods, coffee, yogurt, and also engages in pin and screen printing businesses. These activities involve parolees from the South Jakarta Probation Office, helping them to become economically independent and reducing the likelihood of reoffending. The initiative is a collaboration between the South Jakarta Food Security, Marine and Agriculture Office, and the community group supporting corrections, as well as the Kudwa Al Parusia Foundation. Sahabat pemasyarakatan, that wraps up this week's essential updates. Before we close the program, we present a special performance on traditional dance Jatilan Bergono Wiroguno from inmates of Yogyakarta Prison. Stay connected for our ongoing correction coverage on our social media channels below. Stay tuned for more news updates. Thank you for tuning in to Apa Kabar Masyarakatan English News Channel and Dirgahayu Republik Indonesia. Pemasyarakatan pasti!